Welcome back to the Medical Board Exam Experience with Dr. Kwafo. Today we are beginning a series of four parts. I have titled this series How Dr. Sebastian Failed a USMLE Step Exams but successfully marched into NYU Langone Hospital Internal Medicine Residency Program in Brooklyn, New York. The first part of our series will look at why he failed the USMLE Step 1 exams on his first attempt and how he came back prepared and passed on his second attempt. The second part of this series will focus on how he studied and prepared for the USMLE Step 2 CK and the third part will focus on how he prepared and passed the Step 2 CS. The final part will focus on how he built his CV, how he obtained US research opportunities and how he successfully marched into the NYU Langoni Hospital Internal Medicine Residency Program. Today, we are starting with the first part, which is going to focus on why he failed the USMLE Step 1 exam on his first attempt and how he came back prepared and passed on his second attempt. Let us join Dr. Ibrana in our discussion room. Thank you. Viewers, on this channel, I interview doctors who have successfully passed or failed any medical board exams to share the exams preparation experience with us and with all those preparing to write this. If you are watching me and you have experience in any medical board exams and would like to share with us, kindly contact me on my Facebook page, Instagram, or leave a comment at the comment section of this video and I'll keep in touch. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and recommend this channel to any medical student or medical doctor who is preparing to write the board exams of any country. Thank you. So welcome, Dr. Sebastian. So my first question to you, Doctor, um, is how did you prepare for the USMLE Step 1? So um, hi, everybody. Uh, I am Sebastian Ibarra. Uh, thank you so much, Prince, for inviting me to your interview. I'm so happy to be here. Um, let's talk about step one. Yes. Um, so when I uh, decided to start this journey, I was in Colombia. I was working full time, um, eight hours uh, a day, uh, almost six days a week. And I decided to start studying for the step one. So I didn't have, I, at the beginning, I didn't really have a schedule. I was just using whatever extra time I had to to start reading the Kaplan books, watching videos, doing the U World, like a little bit of everything. But I didn't have uh -huh. a specific schedule. So I did that for about, I think, six to seven months. And uh, I was taking uh, the NBME um, assessments and some of them were good some of them were like kind of like lower score um, and I knew that I was I wasn't being preparing I wasn't preparing enough I was doing just a little bit but okay. I did that for a long time almost seven months eight months uh, and I wanted that to be done I didn't know that the step one was very important. I thought it was just one of the tests, but I didn't know it was like, it, like based on that, it can have a good chance or you have to work harder in order to obtain uh, a residency spot. So I started just uh, a little bit, like behind the average of time that you have to spend with this test. And after, as I said, eight months doing the same, I was a little tired. I didn't want to study more. I was working. So I was thinking, let's give it a chance and let's take the test. So I had, I, I was planning a vacation to come to the US. So I said, I'm just going to schedule. I'm just going to see how it goes. And I failed. <laughs> Wow. So that was that was the first part when you you failed the step one. Yeah, I failed but the step did, one. Did you, did, did you finish the the entire first eight before taking it? Yeah, I I did. Um, I usually when I when I when I study, I like to take notes. So I have 
a bunch of like little flashcards, notebooks with my notes. Um, I don't. I usually don't like to read from the book uh, several times, so I, I went through all the Kaplan books. Uh, mm -hmm. I took my notes and then I did the the first aid once. Okay, and did you finish the U word? No, not all of the questions. I, in, during my first, before I, I took it the first time, no, I didn't finish it. Okay, so during the exams, why do you think you feel, how was the questions? Were they so difficult or why do you think you failed? Um, multiple reasons. I think the mm -hmm. first one, I underestimate the test. Uh, because I didn't think it was going to be that hard. Um, second, uh, I wasn't practicing a lot of blocks during my during the last month of what I was studying. I didn't practice that many blocks. So when you get to the test and you know the time is counting and if you don't answer that question is going to be gone, that's the thing that you need to be aware and you need to practice several times and you need to be aware of this the, the time is, is, is clocking, the, the time is, is, is every, every time is less, 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 and you need to answer. And that's a thing that probably when you're practicing at the beginning, before you go to the test, you're, you're not 100% sure how that experience is going to be. So practice, 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 I think is one of my, the things that I, I learned about my first experience. Uh, second is the time that I was spending with the with the start do the studying time and uh, i decided to change that for my second time and uh, first of all uh, before i share a little bit about my my second time studying for the step one i wish uh, i would like to say that it was a hard time and it's a hard time i believe for all the people that fail and uh, it's the first time but i was a little sad for a long time for like two months probably i didn't want to come back to to the to the books i didn't want to study i was maybe putting that on a side but after thinking uh, a lot about this uh, i knew that this was my dream and it's the thing that i wanted to do i focused those two months on like myself doing exercise, eating well, sleeping well, and trying to think about what uh, the things that I did wrong and how mm. um, I can improve uh, those, those things. So that's when I decided to first, I was working full time, so I decided to quit uh, my job. Okay. And I decided to uh, study full time. Okay. Eight hours per day, seven days a week, having one day off, and just focusing on the things that I knew uh, that were hardening the test, like pathology, microbiology, biochemistry, and um, biostats. Those things were a little like harder for me, so I decided to focus on those things and spend more time studying. I knew that the U war. Um, was going to be very important because I saw the correlation. There are a lot of questions that are very similar to the U work Q bank. And okay. I decided to buy the six months uh, U work Q bank and do that over and over and over and over and over again. And complete okay. the, the 3,000 and, and how many more questions they have and do it, do it to all of them twice and practice at least uh, four blocks every day or two at the end of the day it depends at the beginning it was less but then when i was finishing all the material i was studying i was doing four blocks a day uh, at the end of the day and that really really improved the the timing and the, the questions and and i used less time to study for for the second time like for preparation okay. for the second time i used probably um, six months six months okay so the second time which resources did you really use aside the u word um i had my notes 
those notes were from the Kaplan books. If I okay. probably if my notes were complete or if I needed something else, I went back to the books for specific things. Uh, okay. But mainly I use uh, the the UWAR QBank, the first aid for step one and okay. the self-assessments. Okay, then BMEs. And BMEs and the, the UWAR both. And the UWAR, okay, mainly. Okay, so you will you, most people use some other resources like Sketchy, Patoma, Boss and Beyond. You didn't use any of those? No, I didn't. I at, at some point I was also doing the same. I was looking for a lot of resources and there were a point where I got overwhelmed with a lot of information. I didn't know like which resource to use first and I didn't really want to spend a lot of time. I think my bases were fine. I just needed to improve a little bit with the with the time and also understanding um, the, the structure of the questions and what were they looking for. So I decided not to use more resources uh, instead of focusing on the time and also doing a lot of questions. Oh, okay. So the exams, most people say, um, think it is about memorization. Some people think it's about concepts. In your experience, do you think memorizing made the entire phase, uh, first aid is enough or it's about concepts? I mean, it's impossible to memorize the whole book, like, yeah. <laughs> unless you're genius or something like that, I don't know. But I think it's, it's, it's having basic concepts, um, understanding basic, basic concepts, and understanding that the way that they present the questions, they always going to have two questions that they are very similar, but they want you to answer one of them based on those uh, concept, basic concepts that uh, they mm. repeat over and over in the first day sometime. Oh, okay. So during your preparation, the assessment test you took, did they correlate with your USMLE final score? Uh, for the second time? Yes, the second time. Yes, they did. I was, I was probably uh, getting a little bit more higher score because after I took the, uh, the step one the second time i didn't get a higher score either and um, mm -hmm. so probably using more resources was the thing that i was missing but when you're taking the step for the second time um, i think you already have a lot on you mm -hmm. and you don't want to do you don't want to do a lot but you don't want to do less than what you were doing before um okay. probably i just uh wanted to do it uh, i was getting higher scores i was getting about like 225 to 30s in the in the assessments there is one assessment that i got 215 uh but by that time it's just so hard when you have to make the decision to postpone the test or to continue and i think it's is that is the hardest decision when you when you have to do it on, on your second attempt and uh, I decided to do it uh, and, and I passed I didn't pass with a higher score but at least I knew that the test was gone that I didn't have to worry about that anymore and I had to focus on other things uh, in order to keep uh, building everything okay so you said you quit your job to focus on the exam so how was your study schedule on a typical study day? So on a typical day, I usually, I like to exercise, so I didn't quit, I didn't uh, cut that part of my life. I woke up, I usually wake up at, let's say, 6.30 a.m. Um, I used to walk or just go to the gym, and, and around 8 a.m. I started to, to, to study um, from 8 to noon then a 45 minutes break for to get something to eat and then i was doing again uh, from about one to five or six okay okay sometimes so, when um, the, 
what I was doing at the end of the day, I was also doing new work um, two or four blocks um, during the day. So sometimes when I was doing four blocks, they were like uh, a little bit more time to spend. So I was finishing around seven, 630. Mm -hmm. So I was spending a little bit more time when I was doing four blocks. But beside that, that was kind of like my daily schedule from Monday to Saturday, and I was taking Sundays off. Okay, so looks like the second time your main resource was the U word. How did you really study the U word? So, um, during the first four months, probably I was doing less questions. Let's do two blocks uh, uh, per day. I was reviewing, not just if the questions was right, I was reading the explanation and understanding why the question was right, or if the question was incorrect, I was taking notes and understanding why I, I missed that question, um, why I misunderstand and why did I do wrong. I was really paying attention to those details because they were, um, they do a good job explaining uh, the answers and uh, that was really helpful. I probably did that with all the questions. Okay, so so you you take note from the objective part or the whole explanation about the wrong answers and everything. The whole explanation, like okay. specific notes to differentiate why um, those answers are incorrect and why the one that they want, the one that they said is correct, why. Okay, so that means you were before the exams, you were very familiar with U word questions. So would you would you say that if someone devotes his time to study only U word, he will pass the exams? I will say yes. If you, for example, if if you use U word and you really like nail it and you study just the questions and the explanations and the answers and everything, I think you have a higher chance, a high chance to, to pass mm -hmm. without using any other resource. I will say I didn't spend that much time with the U war, uh, but because it's, it's kind of like weird just to have one resource to study, I, I don't know, it's kind of, you will feel weird, but I will say yes, it's a really good resource. Oh, okay. So most people say uh, a day before the exams, some say they don't even open books, some say they get nervous to the extent that they even take books to the exams hall. So how was your day before the exams? Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read, I didn't check my notes, I didn't do anything. I was, I was, it was, I came here during the, I think it was springtime. So I decided to go to Central Park, relax, uh, eat something that I really wanted, um, just disconnect a little bit from the from the reality <laughs> that the next day I had to take the, the test. Because I don't think this is, is helpful when you have reviewed. There's so many topics, so many subjects that in less than a day, you're not going to be able to review and you're going to get like uh, because you're going to say, ah, I forgot this. I don't know this. Oh my God, what do I need to do? There's no possibility that you, you have, you're going to learn things in the last 24 hours. So whatever you did is done. Oh, okay. So during the exams, do you think there are some questions that you could have answered correctly, but for some reasons you couldn't answer? Like, did you have problem with the time, with your thinking? Were you tired? The first time I had a really a problem with the time. I, I didn't have time to answer probably four questions per block. So that was a really not a good thing. But for the second time, I, I was more familiarized with the, with the time. So I didn't have a problem with the time. It was good. And uh, I think there's always questions that you don't no idea what what uh, I, I think that the genetic the questions about genetics are the the ones that they they call they name a gene that you never heard about and you're like what but there's there's kind of always questions like that 
but in general, I think the second time it was more, I had a, a I understood better and I had a better time with that. Oh, okay. So how did you take your breaks during the exams? Um, I did, let me try to remember. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so I did three blocks. Then I took a, a 10 minutes break. Then I did another three. Mm. And then I, I when I took the, the lunch time. Oh, there, okay. 45 minutes. Mm. And then after lunch, I did the last two. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, after the exam, did you know you were going to pass? Yes, I kind of like the first time I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, because I missed questions and I wasn't sure about what was going on. But the second mm. time, I I had more confidence and I from the beginning, I said, I'm going to pass, and I wasn't that worried. Oh, okay, okay. So if you are to prepare for the step one again, what will you do different? Um, I will keep practicing until I don't have, if I don't have scores in the self-assessments higher than 240, I wouldn't take it. Oh, okay. Which of the self assessment? You want assessment yeah. or NBMEs? What do you say? The you want assessment or NBMEs? Uh, both. But okay. I think that this the you want the number two is the is the closer the this the one that is similar to the test, and okay. for the NBMEs the last ones. The one that you have to do you have to pay for. Oh, okay. okay. So so for those preparing for step one, what advice do you have for them? It's a really um, complicated test. If you can take the test while you're in med school, uh, I think that's my advice. Take it while you're in med school or right after you finish. Because when I took it, it was four years after I finished. Uh, med school. So it was really hard to come back to biochem, to microbiology, to all the things that you long time ago you, you learn about, all the details of the, mm. the enzymes, pathways. It's really difficult when you're in your clinic area or you're like not thinking about, about those uh, basic science. Uh, it's hard to come back and learn or like review that again. So as early as you can take it, that's good. And when you're preparing for that, that that should be your main goal. Okay. Uh, I know that if you're in med school, you're not gonna have a lot of like a lot a lot of time, but it's gonna be easier because the knowledge is more re you recently learned those things, so it's not gonna be that hard. And, and focus on you have goals and have a schedule that's really important if you said i'm gonna start this week with pathology and i'm gonna be i really want to finish pathology in three weeks make everything uh, that you can to meet the deadline that you have for for three weeks because if not there's so many topics so many things that you have to review that every time is gonna be longer and longer and longer and then you're gonna see and 10 months or a year have happened and and you have them have a structure uh, to to see what's going on if you have a structure you're gonna meet your your goals and by the time of six or seven months you're gonna be ready to to take it okay so my first question about my last question about the step one so which resources will you recommend for someone preparing for the exams, which top? What are your top resources? Okay, my top resources is start with the Kaplan books. If uh, you can, there's some videos about uh, related with the Kaplan lectures. If some some of them are online. Sometimes you can download them if you can find them. 
use them with the read and then watch the video. And then it's gonna be, you're gonna understand like better the topic. So start with Kaplan books. When you're done with that, start at the same time with uh, first aid and you work QBank. After okay. probably a month or two doing that, they start doing the, the self-assessments, the MBMEs and the and the you were for uh, the self-assessment and keep doing that until the end. If you have something that you can't find in the first aid and you don't remember and you didn't take notes, get back to the to the Kaplan uh, books for those details. And if they're not there, look for uh, another resource online or the things that you can find online. But I wouldn't get overwhelmed with a lot of resources because then you have too many things and you're not going to focus on, on one. OK, so you are you, your top resources are Kaplan, First Aid, U Word, and MBMEs. Yep. OK, all right. So uh, let's go to the CK. So,